The two rarest items in the game are the fluorescent green Meccano Strider and the Talisman of the Binding Shard. Each item is only owned by one person in the entire game, and both got their items by mistake. I'm going to be talking about 10 different items besides those two I just mentioned, and some of them aren't exactly the rarest items, but I'll be going over them because they're a little lesser known than items famous for being rare, like the Love Rocket or the Time Lost Proto Drake. And some of the items I'll talk about aren't even useful or valuable, just rare in the sense that not many people have them. During Mist, instead of going the usual route of having different types of elemental crafting reagents, like Volatile Life, Fire, and Earth, etc., and Cataclysm, or Motes of Earth, Wind, Shadow, and BC, Mist just used Spirits of Harmony instead. But it seems like Blizzard was experimenting with having spirits of other elements, like Spirit of Summer, Autumn, Winter, and Spring. But they just got rid of them and stuck to only having Spirits of Harmony since that made things easier, and they just never implemented the other four spirits. But, for some reason, Spirit of Summer ended up in the game somehow. It's not used for anything, doesn't drop from any mob, and isn't sold from any vendor, but somehow started showing up on auction houses. The Phylactery of Kel'Thuzad, obtained from Vanilla Kel'Thuzad in Naxxramas could be turned in for a nice little reward, but had a neat little thing included in its quest text that hinted that maybe it'd be better to destroy it. Turns out, the person you turned the phylactery into was working for the Lich King and is the reason we get a second Nax in Wrath of the Lich King. The phylactery in fantasy fiction is an object used to contain a Lich's soul. If a Lich is killed, their soul will return to its phylactery. In D&D, a Lich's body will reform in 1d10 days at the location of the phylactery. 1d10, of course, means to roll a 10-sided die, so the Lich could come back in 1 to 10 days. Usually, Liches hide their phylacteries in secret vaults or in other dimensions, but apparently Kel'Thuzad just kept his in his pocket or something. He's such a terrible Lich. With Vanilla Nax removed and this item no longer obtainable, along with its quest and turn-in, Blizzard actually went back and changed its flavor text to, someone has been holding on to this for a very long time which is not something Blizzard likes to do, like, ever. Before patch 1.7, the large vile slime in the Western Plaguelands had a chance to drop an item called Timolin's Phylactery. This was a quest item not part of any quest, and didn't require you to be on a quest to get the drop. The item never had any uses before it was removed from the loot tables in patch 1.7. The slime that dropped the item was the only slime in game up to that point that had a mana bar. The story for what the item could have been used for goes as follows. Timulane was either a mage or a lich, who most likely created the Ashbringer for the Scarlet Crusade. And after he created the blade, was killed by the Crusade and either fed to the slimes or became the only slime with a mana bar. It was widely believed that this was the first step to finding the Ashbringer, one of the most sought after legendary weapons of vanilla that was never actually put into the game. It is theorized that when Blizzard decided to not put the Ashbringer in the game, they changed their mind on the whole quest chain that was planned, and that's why Timolane's phylactery was removed from the loot tables. Then, later on, Blizzard said it was actually Magni Bronzebeard who created the Ashbringer, completely removing Timolane from the game. The Ashbringer remained a hot topic for players for years for some reason, as many people kept wondering when it would be put into the game. Then when Nax came out, they found out what happened to it. It was corrupted, and players were able to get a corrupted version of the Ashbringer, which is also one of the rarest items in the game as well, since it's no longer obtainable, and highly sought after. Now, in order to get an uncorrupted Ashbringer, all you have to do is wait for Legion and get one for free. The Chromatic Sword is the only weapon in game with a rainbow glow to it and no longer drops, so it can only be bought on the auction house. The weapon actually didn't have its special glow when it was first put into the game and was added later on, so it was widely regarded as a useless weapon since its only stats were plus 7 to all resistances. The sword itself had a low chance to drop from a rare mob in Stranglethorn called Scalebelly. In Cataclysm, with the revamp to the Old World, Scalebelly was lowered from a level 45 mob to a level 31, and since the sword required you to be at least level 40 to equip, the now level 31 mob no longer dropped the higher level sword. And with the sword's old history of being regarded as a useless weapon, not many people had the sword lying around on their banks since it was vended or DE quite often. And now it's probably one of the rarest weapons you can buy and sell in the game, with no more than 10 ever being on all auction houses in the world combined at any given time. 
So, good luck finding it on your server, like, ever. To celebrate the launch of Vanilla's honor system, because battlegrounds and honor points were not put into the game at launch, Blizzard held a contest for whoever get the highest ranking in the new honor system would get a new graphics card and a tabard, plus a chance at some other prizes. The tabard they gave out is a unique, one-of-a-kind design that has the WoW logo on it, and was only given to the winners of each faction on each server. And of course, is super rare because of that. During WoW's anniversary, they'll give you a little item that will give you an XP buff, and while you have the XP buff active, you get to wear this tabard temporarily. Now let's take a look at an item that used to be super rare before it was obtainable through the Salvage Yard in Warlords, and that's the Tibu's Blazing Longsword. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. This item was actually on the box art of Vanilla WoW with its tooltip and everything. One of the few items in the game that looks like a lightsaber. The item was only obtainable as a really rare world drop in Vanilla for level 60 plus mobs. Back in the day, the sword could be sold for hundreds of thousands of gold. But nowadays, it only goes for... Uh, well, on this server I play on, it's going for a little over 100k. Let me check another server. Wow, I'm going for 20k on this one. Not half bad. Turns out there's still a market for the sword on some servers. There is another item called the Blade of Wizardry with the same look that goes for way cheaper, but was also super rare at one point, and also dropped from the salvage crates. So it's not as rare as it used to be. The Shadowfang Sword is the best in slot weapon for level 19 rogue twinks, one of the more popular twink classes. The sword itself has a rare chance to drop from Shadowfang keep bosses on normal mode, it used to have a chance to drop from all mobs in Shadowfang, but was nerfed to only the bosses, making the very sought-after weapon even more valuable. Now, I'm not sure how the Twink community is doing nowadays, but the item is still in pretty high demand and can fetch a pretty nice price on the auction house. Frozen runes dropped from Vanilla Nax and had a nice effect to absorb fire damage on a 3 minute cooldown. The thing with this item was that it was also used in quite a few recipes for a set of Frost Resist gear which was pretty useful for the Ice Dragon fight. With the removal of original Nax, these runes are no longer obtainable, so the ones still in game are limited, and since this is one of the few crafting materials with an actual on-use effect, that just added to the novelty of the item. If the effect was super useful or something, the item might be even more rare, but it's just a minor fire damage reduction at best, so it's not all that super useful. Well, unless you're like a level 60 twink who really wants to have every competitive edge possible. More of a collector's item, really. The lifelike mechanical toad schematic is one of the rarest engineering recipes with a useful craft that can be sold. And that is, of course, making a little battle pet. I remember back in my gold making days when I was trying to squeeze every last bit of gold making potential from all my professions. Engineering was my lowest earner, with the mecho hog sold every couple of weeks being the most I ever made for the profession. And checking the auction house every day for the schematic was part of my daily routine. I never did get it back then, not until years later when my realm got connected with a couple of others, but I still remember it as my most sought after recipe ever. And I have a ton of really rare recipes on all of my crafters. This stupid one just never showed up on the auction house for me. And now if I look at the auction house, I can see two of them at 15k each. Such a steal. I mean, this isn't the rarest recipe in the game or anything, not even close, but it was one of the rarest recipes that I looked for for an incredibly long time, so it holds a special place in my heart as being a pain in the ass to look after. And finally, we got the Vanilla Thistle Tea Recipe. Before patch 1.3, rogues could get a non-soulbound recipe for Thistle Tea, a rogue-only item that gave them an energy boost. The recipe could be learned through cooking, allowing rogues to have one more cooking recipe than every other class. But you could trade the original recipe, allowing other classes to learn it. After patch 1.3, they made the recipe soulbound so this couldn't happen anymore, but they left the recipes that were already out there and non-soulbound as they were. Since this chain happened so early in the game, not many people had this tradable recipe, and with more people buying and trading and learning this recipe, the item only got rarer and rarer. Some really dedicated collectors would transfer servers just to buy the recipe if someone was willing to sell it. Now I don't know when exactly these changes were made, but later on in WoW's life, the recipe was removed from non-rogues cooking spellbooks, and the recipe itself was turned into an unusable item that simply says, teaches you how to brew thistle tea. Even though it doesn't, the unusable item is still pretty rare and can be sold, 
but it's not really as useful of a rare item as it once was, when it was an actual learnable recipe. 